What's up YouTube peeps? This is your buddy Drew along with uh, my buddy Snowman broadcasting live from the club and uh, just in case you also have a Christmas themed animatronic snowman who needs a portable disco uh, you could do worse than the black diamond spot headlamp. How about that for a segue huh? Well, but seriously though, I did actually want to do a uh, a review on the uh, Black Diamond Spot headband here. Uh, it's actually pretty nice overall, like a lot of things I review. But uh, why don't we start with some numbers on it. Uh, this actually does have uh, two lighting modes, I guess you could say. Uh, what the instructions call the white mode and the red mode and the white mode actually has two modes within it a uh, it has the single spotlight that comes on and then on the side it has two uh, white LEDs that come on the spot is the brighter of the two the uh, side ones are not as bright and in the red mode it has these two red LEDs on the side that uh, come on and uh, basically just one brightness there uh, for the single spot in the middle uh, the max lumens on that is 75 and the minimum is actually 4 and the reason I it has actually has a minimum and a maximum is because uh, this light is infinitely variable in brightness uh, in uh, the two white modes the, uh, the dimmer uh, side LEDs, uh, the uh, max brightness on that is 16 lumens and the minimum is also 4. And uh, as far as runtime for the uh, center LED, uh, the, they claim it'll get uh, 50 hours on the uh, max maximum setting and uh, 200 hours on the minimum setting. And for the side uh, LEDs, that uh, changes to uh, 90 hours uh, maximum on the uh, uh, 16 lumens setting and 250 hours on the dim setting and I'll just go ahead and turn this on and show you guys here um, basically turning it on you just press this button on the top once to uh, turn it on and to right now you can see it's on the center mode and it's actually pretty bright uh, if you want to switch to the side you just turn it off and then turn it back on and now you're on the two side LEDs and if you that's how you toggle between the spot and the uh, up close LEDs uh, reason I say up close uh, these two are mainly the two side LEDs are uh, mainly just for uh, uh, provide enough light to work up close without being blinding and the uh, middle LED or the spot LED will actually go uh, further um, it's not it's actually a little bit maybe too bright for some up close things unless you dim it while we're talking about that let's go ahead and show you how to dim it basically uh, you turn it on and then hold the the button down or turn it on release it and then hold it down and it will dim until it gets to its maximum dimness at which time it will pause and blink let you know it's at maximum uh, you can either let off there or if you can let off anywhere in the in between that or if you keep holding it down it will come back up in brightness and allow you to go back through it if you overshot how dim you wanted it see here it comes it always turns on the maximum brightness by the way so if even if you set it uh, to whatever you want it at. If you shut it off, you're going to have to reset it uh, to the brightness level that you wanted. See, I'm going to hold the button down. You can see it slowly get down. And you can see it blink there, and now it's coming back up and it blinks. It comes back down and it blinks. And goes back up and it blinks. Now you can let off the button at any, t any point in that uh, changing of the dimness or brightness, however you want to say it and uh, it'll hold that that uh, level and if you keep going it will dim back down that's the minimum four 
lumens on the uh, middle LED. If I hold it, and it'll get back up to 75. So that's actually pretty handy. That's one of the reasons I uh, picked this one is because of the variable brightness. I uh, looked at uh, a few at Cabela's. This was kind of an impulse buy, but I compared the ones on their shelf there for a while. This one actually seemed to probably have the best features for the money, which uh, the cost on it was $39.99, which I think is pretty typical of this headlight. And there's quite a few other ones in that price range. Uh, if you switch over to the little side LEDs, the, the dimmer ones, uh, you can also adjust the brightness on there. And uh, I've uh, actually used the uh, this setting, this mode and this setting on dim uh, as a uh, reading light, uh, which it worked pretty good for that. Now, uh, I mentioned the red mode earlier. Uh, basically, these two LEDs are supposed to uh, turn on red, and that uh, will is uh, preserve your night vision if you're in uh, trying to work up close and in, in darkness. Uh, the way you get to that is with the light off. You press and hold the button for three seconds. But look, if you noticed, only one LED came on. What's that all about, right? Well, I must have got a bad one. And I was kind of bummed about that. But um, I haven't heard of anyone else having this issue. I looked a little bit on the internet to see if anyone else had come across this. So I didn't really find anything. It's probably an isolated incident, but it, uh, it still kind of sucks. But basically, uh, there must be a loose solder joint or some kind of connection in there because... Uh, basically the first first day I was trying this out in my bathroom I had all the lights off trying to test out this uh, red mode and I had both LEDs on or both LEDs were on I was playing around with the uh, pivoting and when I got to I just did like that and that one LED went out I was like what the heck so I kind of smacked it a few times uh, a couple times it came on a couple times it came off and now it seems like it doesn't want to come on at all so I'm basically down to one red LED um, like I said that kind of sucks but to be honest it uh, it really didn't seem that bright anyway even with both of them and uh, you can still kind of see with the one but both of them really didn't make I, I didn't see it being that much of a difference. It uh, it still wasn't really bright enough, in my opinion, to uh, you know do any things I would do with it as far as you know walking or you know that's how dim it was. You couldn't really see in front of you still if you were in uh, uh, pitch blackness. I tried walking around the house with it a little bit. I wouldn't want to be running basically with it in red mode. Uh, so. It's a feature I don't really plan on using much, so I'll, I'll just keep it and go with it. Uh, I didn't try to return it for warranty or anything like that, so uh, Black Diamond may have stood behind it, but I don't know for sure. But anyway, a uh, couple other features it has that's kind of nice. Uh, if you notice this LED here, this actually is a combination uh, power meter and lock indicator. I'll show you every time you turn it on, it will, uh, this LED here lights up to tell you the status of the battery. And if you see, well, let me get back into the white mode. Yeah, I think it has to be in white mode. You can see that it is, uh, let's try it again, turned on green. This right there is green. And it stays lit up for a few seconds after you uh, turn it on. And... Uh, that green indicates that the battery life is 50% or greater. If you do turn it on and it turns orange, that means you have between 25% and 50% 50, 50 battery life. And if it's red, you have less than 25%. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess maybe some other ones have that, but... Um, you know, I thought that was a nice feature and then also uh, Like I said it doubles as a lock indicator 
and uh, if you press the if you have the light off you press and hold the button for six seconds uh, you can lock the light and it will take basically another press of six seconds to turn the light on so uh, that'll help keep you from accidentally turning it on and running the batteries down I'll show you that there hold it now you see I hold it for three seconds and the red comes on now six seconds and the blue comes on so I'm going to let off and if you see if I press it uh, by accident the blue light comes on indicating that's locked none of the LEDs come on I have to hold it again for six seconds to get the light to unlock and now it's back to normal so that's pretty nice um, it's kinda takes a little bit of getting used to as far as all the timing and you know how many times you have to press the button to get it in a certain mode but it's not too bad uh, it's all done from this one button here at the top uh, which is kind of a rubber coated button has a pretty good feel to it um, and also it has a strobe mode and the way you get to the strobe is with the light off you press the button three times and there you go that's what Mr. Snowman was uh, getting jiggy with it too earlier in the club <laughs> that's his little disco uh, now also uh, on strobe mode you can see it strobing on the two uh, side white LEDs that is the only uh, way that it will strobe it won't strobe on the middle LED which I thought was a kind of strange that you know I might have liked the bright strobe but how about weight that's usually a pretty important factor on uh, especially headlamps I guess you could say uh, the uh, manual lists this as 90 grams uh, total weight which is right around three ounces so it's actually not that bad and that uh, includes the batteries uh, without the batteries uh, it's 54 grams and it says the batteries are 36 so that's a total of 90 and the way you get to the batteries is you just grab your fingernail in there and pop it open and there you've got your three triple A's the manual says that this uh, light is waterproof rated at IPX4 and it talks about how it can uh, you know take general splashes of water it does mention that the water will get inside the uh, battery area but uh, not into the light area so uh, you will have to dry that out it mentions that it can affect your battery life if you get water in there I don't plan on take it, taking it snorkeling but uh, somebody might and hey you never know I might I might end up doing that someday um, Another, uh, I showed earlier, but another nice feature is the uh, detents it has for different angles. Uh, this is actually pretty handy. Uh, I use this uh, when walking the dogs early in the morning, especially here lately. Uh, this time of year, fall, it's getting dark earlier and earlier. And uh, this has been working out pretty nice. I can uh, put on my head, I usually tip it down a notch or two and uh, on the bright mode uh, that will give me plenty of light it gives a nice spot out to you know I usually go about maybe 20 feet in front of myself and the dogs and it works out pretty nice there I guess I also might mention on the uh, detents of the uh, you know directional pointing up or down on it uh, it does seem to be not super sturdy I mean it, it it actually doesn't come out of the detent really easily but it does feel like it might be a little flimsy with with overuse um, you can see uh, this this little plastic tab is kind of a it goes down inside these little notches here as you swivel it around and that's actually what's holding the light in any given position is that little tab there so I imagine that tab might be able to break over time 
especially if you work this a lot or abuse it but so far it's been I haven't really had too many problems I usually only go one down one if it, if anything I also did uh, you know if you see it comes at a 90 degree angle you could uh, flip the uh, strap around backwards or upside down rather and then you can light the ceiling above you uh, if you needed uh, basically to light a room uh, and be hands free so that was kind of a nice nice little find there uh, it's got this pretty pretty nice stretchy strap on it um, and it's also of course it's removable it uh, you can see here it just comes out of this slot here in the middle and basically you just have to stick it in that slot and you can pull it out so with, uh, with that off, you can actually attach this to, uh, if you've got uh, a bag or, you know, something with either just a general one-inch strap or some uh, uh, molly webbing, it can kind of go in there. Uh, with webbing, it's sort of, you don't have enough really slack to really get it on both sides of this, but you can kind of stick one end down into the webbing, and if you've got gravity holding it down, it stays put. I'll, I'll uh, let me just go grab the Malaga. Let's take a shot of that. All right, I've got the uh, Maxpedition Malaga here, and uh, here's the uh, strap, and here's some of the Molly webbing on there. And just to kind of as show you as an example, um, you know, if you wanted, you could uh, tuck this down into the webbing. And it is a little bit tricky because this is not very, it's not real flexible and of course the webbing is pretty, there's not a lot of slack there since it's a relatively short piece of uh, uh, strap there. So you might have to fight a little bit, might help if I pull that out of there. So, I did a little experimenting with this and uh, once I got it on there, uh, this part, if you have the back, the pack to your back, uh, this will go across the middle of your chest here and actually have a nice uh, beam of light coming straight out from your chest. And then it was a little bit high, so I just tilted it down one, one notch there and it was, uh, you know, give me a, a nice beam of light uh, just slightly downward from the center of my chest. So that's an option if uh, maybe you're got a headache from wearing the headband or you just don't want to uh, you know that's another option and you know depending on the pack a lot of the uh, Maxpedition well I guess almost every Maxpedition pack and some of the other ones out there uh, that are similar in style I've got the webbing on the back I mean you could put this on the strobe attach it to the back side of the pack and you know if you were out hiking in the dark with with some of your friends you could keep track of each other that way uh, there was some claims uh, in the instruction book about distances I think I did not quite agree with um, for instance on the uh, bright mode it uh, says that the uh, distance it can reach is uh, 75 meters uh, or actually 70 meters um, that wasn't my experience. You might be able to actually see some light reflecting at that distance, but as far as actual usable light, I think its uh, maximum effectiveness is more in the range of 50 or 75 feet. Um, you know, as far as being able to actually see detail. So, but but it's still. I mean, I don't know why you'd need a headlamp to see 70 meters. That's quite a ways away, but, um, you know, I'm not a hardcore backpacker, so maybe some of you might, but um, it, it really does work good for, you know, probably the average user. Um, walking the dogs, hiking, I mean, it's, it's great for that. It goes plenty far enough and has plenty enough light uh, to see where you're going. Um, and then also... The, on the dim setting, on the two side LEDs, it says the maximum distance is uh, 15 meters. And that, uh, again, does not really seem to be 
the effective distance, you know, I would probably say maybe in the range of uh, 10 to 20 feet, you know, as far as being able to pick out detail and all that. But uh, why don't we take a look at uh, some uh, demonstrations uh, of the lights in uh, darkness here in my fancy shed. I'm now in my darkened tool shed so please excuse the junk that's all around but uh, I wanted to take uh, some footage in darkness to kind of give a comparison uh, of the headlamps different settings um, I've got the camera set on manual exposure so uh, it, it won't automatically compensate uh, for the change in brightness levels uh, which can sometimes uh, be misleading on how bright uh, it actually is so right now uh, I've got the uh, headlamp on the uh, dim mode but on the brightest uh, level of that mode and I'm looking at uh, uh, the wall of the shed here just about arm's length away and you can see when I turn to the side at a far wall which is about oh, maybe eight feet away uh, you know the light really uh, dims down it's not it's not super bright at long range and it's it's really not uh, designed to uh, but up close you know it's it's pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and switch it on high mode here right, you can see that the camera uh, is not uh, has not adjusted uh, darker to compensate for that bright light uh, for that you know just so you can see the difference there and when I look away you can you can tell there's a lot a lot more long range visibility on the on the bright setting I'll switch it back to dim for a comparison here now uh, this setting here uh, where the camera is set at uh, that's pretty much what my eye is seeing as far as the light when I look close up there's really not that much glare uh, when I look at it with my eye but just uh, for comparison purposes it helps uh, to see that let's try the red red uh, LED setting here and you can see it's not really bright especially since one, only one of the LEDs is working and the camera kind of has a hard time uh, focusing there but um, you know it's usable up close long range it's not really it's almost not even there but up close you know it does help there's back to bright now all in all I think this is actually a pretty good light um, I would recommend it to anybody that uh, needs a headlamp, and I think we all do. If you're if you're being honest, come on. At least uh, you know you never know when you're gonna uh, be on the side of the road fixing a tire. You know you don't have to be a backpacker to find a use for one of these. So uh, maybe a storm comes and the power goes out. Maybe you need to get out of there hands free. Uh, you know if you're helping your family gather stuff up or you know even picking picking one of them up picking your kids up so uh, I think everybody should have a headlamp um, you know for emergency things you don't like I say you don't have to necessarily be a mountain climber to to use one of these so but uh, this one's actually pretty good I'd say uh, for the price I like it again I am a little bummed about that red light but you know it's probably just a one-time deal so um, Hopefully uh, this review helps you guys spend in your dollars. And of course, old snowman, he really digs it.